President, uh, I come to the floor today to express my serious concerns with the FDA's actions on opioid pain relievers and my concern that they have not sufficiently addressed what we are seeing as an epidemic uh, in my home state of New Hampshire, the implications of prescribing of opioids and ensuring that we take a very strong public health approach uh, towards uh, these pain relievers. Uh, I know that my colleagues, Senator Markey and Manchin and Blumenthal, have been on the floor previously to discuss the concerns that they share with the FDA as well, and I want to thank them for their leadership on this important issue. See, I think what's important to understand here um, is what we are facing when it comes to heroin, uh, the drug deaths that are occurring in my home state of New Hampshire, um, the connection between people who are misusing uh, prescription opioids and then becoming addicted to heroin, and then the deadly use of a drug called fentanyl, which is 50 times more powerful than heroin. And when you bring this all together, um, we have a situation with opioid abuse, which includes painkiller abuse, heroin use, fentanyl abuse, and it is killing people in New Hampshire and across this country. Across the country, approximately 30,000 people died of heroin or prescription opioid overdoses in 2014. And as we come to receive the 2015 numbers, unfortunately, if the experience is anything like my home state of New Hampshire, the numbers are going to be much larger than 30,000. Because in New Hampshire, every corner of my state has been impacted by this. Um, I had the privilege of serving as Attorney General before I came to the Senate, and so I dealt with many drug issues as Attorney General. In fact, I had a drug task force that reported to me. We dealt with the scourge of methamphetamine, of cocaine, of other illegal drugs that certainly have caused addiction and people to struggle with addiction. Obviously, also alcohol is something that people struggle with when it's misused. But I've never seen anything like this. And I, I talk to my law enforcement officers, I talk to my first responders and what they are dealing with. In 2015 in New Hampshire, we had over 400, 400 overdose deaths. And those 400 deaths are a situation where you had a combination, um, many of them, hundreds of them, of heroin and or fentanyl. And this was a dramatic increase over 2014. In 2014, we had 320 deaths. And by the way, that was a 60% increase from the year before. And this is just unfortunately not stopping. It, it is the single most important public health and safety issue facing the state of New Hampshire right now. But I know New Hampshire is not alone. Certainly working with my colleagues like Rob Portman in Ohio, I know that this is hitting places like Ohio. Working with Sheldon Whitehouse in Rhode Island, this is hitting Rhode Island, or Amy Klobuchar in Minnesota. This is hitting so many different places in our country. That's why I know Senator Markey from Massachusetts is concerned about this, and Senator Manchin, who was on the floor earlier from West Virginia. Um, this, is, this is about uh, our quality of life in this country and ability to pe for people to live full lives and about our public safety and about our children, uh, most of all. Just a headline from the union leader over this weekend. Fentanyl, other drugs suspected in three Manchester deaths. So we had three deaths in New Hampshire in our largest city within 24 hours. And that was from a combination of heroin and fentanyl, those three deaths. So we lost, according uh, to Assistant Fire Chief Dan Daniel Goonan, in just 24 hours, these overdoses claimed the lives of 24-year-old man uh, on, in Manchester, a 29-year-old woman, and a 34-year-old man, just in a 24-hour period. In fact, what our first responders are seeing, I, I did a ride along with the, the Manchester Fire Department. I saw, uh, I was there less than an hour, we went to an overdose. 
And I saw the firefighters and their emergency personnel uh, bring someone back to life using Narcan, uh, CPR, and Narcan. If we did not have that drug, the, the over 400 that we have in New Hampshire, I can't even tell you what the numbers would be. Because not only did I do a ride along with the Manchester Fire, I did it with the police too. We went to two overdoses in an hour and a half. And I saw them bring those individuals back to life. The less we think that this is something that happens on some other street or in some other neighborhood, I can assure you that this can happen to any family. And that's something that we need to understand. And that was really brought home for me from a great, wonderful group, uh, family that I've met. Um, and that's uh, Doug and Pam Griffin, who lost their beautiful daughter, Courtney. And they're wonderful, wonderful people. And you know, I, I think about what our first responders are facing. This same article I just talked to you about over the weekend, unbelievable. Twice, twice the fire department in Manchester have revived a woman who is four months pregnant, working on, on her in front of her young children. The overdose that I went to, I'll never forget because the firefighters came into the room and there was a young man on the ground and they administered the Narcan and brought him back. But you know who was in the corner? A crib with a baby. And the firefighter grabbed the baby and was bringing the baby over, the, the father laying on the ground. And so this is having such a tremendous impact, having an impact on those who are struggling with addiction, but all their families and the children around them and the future generations. So uh, just, just to quote, the assistant fire chief from Manchester from this article who basically said, it is more deadly than we have ever seen. And so that is why I've been proud to work um, with my colleagues and proud to work uh, with Senators Whitehouse and Portman and Klobuchar and so many others on the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act. And I thank the members of the Judiciary Committee for voting that important piece of legislation out of the committee. And I look forward to us taking that up on the floor. But right now, pending on the floor, we have an important nomination uh, for the FDA. And that is why I come to the floor today. Because if you look at what we're addressing here, we're, we're concerned about heroin and fentanyl. But there is a connection, a very important connection for us to understand, unfortunately. And it's also why I've been such a strong supporter of prescription monitoring programs. Uh, that the opiates that are prescribed, that SAMHSA has found that four out of five individuals uh, who turned to heroin actually started with prescription opiates and misusing prescription opiates or overusing those and then transitioned to heroin because heroin uh, is cheaper, unfortunately, on our streets. So it's very important that we have the FDA engaging on this issue very aggressively with our medical community, that the FDA take a prominent role in ensuring that what they are saying is this is the appropriate use of prescription opiates. And this is, in my humble opinion, the FDA needs to take a much more aggressive role than it has in recommending the appropriate uses and engaging the medical community um, and the pharmaceutical community, very importantly, um, on this discussion, this public health crisis that we are facing. Uh, we have come together as a body on this issue, and I think it's important that we've been working on this in a very bipartisan basis. But just to talk about the importance of, of the FDA and the leadership that we need there. In 2013, we saw the FDA approve Zohydro, a powerful, pure hydrocodone drug without an abuse deterrent formulation. And that's important, an abuse deterrent formulation, so that it, can be, it will be used for its intended purpose and not chopped up or otherwise abused. But yet the FDA approves Ohydro, uh, this powerful pure hydrocodone drug, without an abuse deterrent formulation, despite the fact that its own advisory committee, its own advisory committee voted against approving the drug by a vote of 11 to 2. And one of the issues that I know, I see Senator Markey coming to the floor, and I appreciate his leadership on this. One of the things that I know has troubled, uh, troubled 
Senator Markey, Senator Manchin, myself as well. Last year, the FDA approved OxyContin for use by children as young as 11. And when they did that, they did not have the advisory committee or use an advisory committee uh, before taking that step. And so I would say, I, I certainly appreciate, because I've had the opportunity to sit down with, with uh, Secretary Burwell on this issue and learn more about the FDA's action plan that it has issued. But unfortunately, I believe the agency has to go further than it's going. Um, and the example that I would say is that the issuance um, of the recommendations for the children as young as 11 with OxyContin um, without an advisory committee on something so important seems, to me, just doesn't, doesn't pass the common sense test. So I would ask the FDA, let's stay that. Let's make sure that we have an advisory committee, look at this issue carefully, and, and then reissue it. Um, because to me, it seems important that we have that guidance and the careful, thoughtful approach of the advisory committee. You know, what troubles me, of course, is we hope that they would take the advisory committee's recommendations, unlike what happened with Zohydro, unfortunately. So we need leadership right now in the FDA. And I have concerns with that uh, we are not going to be in a position where we get the strongest leadership we can have. And, and I hope uh, we have a nominee pending on the floor. Um, these concerns are uh, very, very important. And I hope, um, uh, if he is confirmed, that uh, he will be aggressive on this issue, that the FDA will take a stronger leadership role um, on opiates and understanding that they have a very important role when it comes to this public health concern. But right now, I'm not satisfied with where we are. And I believe there is so much more we need to do. And that is actually why yesterday I voted not to go forward with this nomination, because I haven't heard this clear statement. I haven't heard what the leadership plans are on this issue. Um, and while I appreciate some of the steps that Health and Human Service has taken, uh, those steps to me need to be strengthened and very much strengthened to ensure um, that as I look at the FDA's action plan, it pledges to make the use of advisory committees more frequent, but it should require the use of advisory committees for all opioid pain relievers. Not just when we decide we want to use it, this should be consistent, given that we know, unfortunately, that the data is there of the connection uh, between misuse of opioid pain relievers and the connection to those who then unfortunately turn to heroin with the deadly combination often of fentanyl, which is killing people in this country. Again, I would like to, to uh, thank Senator Markey for his leadership on this issue. You know, there isn't a place I go in my state where I don't hear from a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a grandmother, a grandfather, a friend, about someone who lost, lost a loved one, lost someone that they care about because of heroin, opioids, fentanyl, the deadly combination that is killing people. And we have an opportunity not only in the important work with the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act and more resources to address prevention, treatment, support for our first responders, but the FDA has a very important role, and we need stronger leadership there and greater engagement of our medical community on the best prescribing practices for opioids. And to me, this is an opportunity where I would like to hear stronger leadership. I would like to hear uh, a much more aggressive stance from this FDA. And this issue, I think of all the issues that we you know, we struggle with the things that we disagree on in this body. Heroin, fentanyl, they don't care whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I can assure you, or an independent or a libertarian, because this drugs, these drugs are taking everyone's lives. And so as I think about all the issues we can come together on, this is one about our public health, 
about our public safety, about our quality of life, and it requires all of our leadership. There's nothing partisan about this, and I hope that we will see stronger leadership from the FDA. I hope that we as a body will build on what the Judiciary Committee did and bring to the floor uh, the CARA bill that we've, many of us have worked hard on and support each other's efforts to do all that we can uh, to end this public health crisis and ensure that none of us have to run into families of people in our state that we represent that are losing people they love to heroin or fentanyl or misuse of opioid prescription drugs. This is devastating. And I know we can make a difference here. This is something that we can make a difference on in this body. So I thank you, Mr. President, and I yield the floor.